I want you to get your Bibles out and turn them to the book of Matthew, chapter 9. Matthew chapter 9, just hold them there. We're going to get to that in a minute. But this evening, I mean, we've been focusing this whole month. It's good to see my disciple, Henry. Give him a hand. He's here. Hallelujah. First time, say hi to Henry. Amen. Uh, he's, I've been praying for Henry to come to church, and now he's here tonight. Right now, he's probably nervous. He's sweating right now. Pastor Manu, you're throwing me out there. That's all right, brother. You're family. Hallelujah. He's family. Amen. And, and it's good to see him here and a couple other ones over there in the corner there. Amen. And it's good to see a couple brothers here that I've been praying for to get to church, uh, not only on Friday night, but on Sunday morning. And, you know, you know, a disciple is always in church. Oh, let me say that over here. Come on, somebody. A disciple is always in church. Because you know why we're in church all the time? Because we can't get enough. We can't get enough of the gospel. We can't get enough of the anointing. We can't get enough of Jesus in our life. Jesus in the morning, Jesus in the afternoon, and Jesus at night. Jesus when I wake up, and Jesus when I go to sleep. Jesus, whatever I'm doing is Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. If you want to talk to me, we're talking about Jesus. That's a disciple. Always talking about Jesus. Always ministering about Jesus Christ. Because if it wasn't for him, where would we be? Just think about that for a second. Where would we be if it wasn't for Jesus? Stepping in when he stepped in. Amen. So tonight, uh, this whole month, like, like we've been talking about, relentless discipleship. Tonight, we're going to be speaking about the fighting disciples. Say that. The fighting disciples. The fighting disciples tonight. So the goal of this whole month is just to prepare our church, to get our church ready. Because, you know, we got a lot of new people that have been coming, right? But now we don't want to just see new people or people that just come to church, but we want to start seeing and making disciples, right? We learned last Sunday a disciple is a learner, a pupil, one that emu emulates, right, right, those that are teaching them, right? And we want to emulate Jesus Christ. We want to be a representation of the, our Father, right, that has, has saved us and rescued us. And we want to be able to share that love and share that joy and, sh and, 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 and shine that light to a hurting and dying generation. See, a, a disciple understands, I got to be where the anointing is at. I got to be at women's convention. I got to make my way to mighty men of valor. If I got to sell my car, if I got to sell my new shoes, if I got to do whatever I got to do legally, hallelujah, I'm going to get there. Can the men of God say amen? Oh, that was kind of weak, men of God. Can the men of God say amen? There you go. All right. Amen. We want to make sure everybody's there. And mighty men of valor. So that's what we want to do. We want to start making and seeing disciples raised up, right? We want to raise up disciples. Not only any disciples, but radical disciples. We want to see disciples that are radical. I know there was, I, there was a disciple. We had our life group on Wednesday night. One of the disciples came in, and he says, I'm going to be going and preaching at, uh, at the train station. I go, you are? I says, what? I says, I says, amen. He goes, I got somebody going with me, and I'm going to go preaching at 4 o'clock uh, on Friday, right? Today, uh, no, yesterday, Thursday. He says, 4, 4 o'clock on Thursday, tomorrow, he says, I'm going to be preaching, and if, if nobody hears me, I don't care. I said, so, 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 so why, why don't we do this? I said, why don't we have a training right now? In, right now, I'm going to train you right now. Because I can't train you right there. I'm going to train you right now. He says, okay, let's do it. A good disciple is always open, hallelujah, ready to be trained. So you know what I did? I gave them my bullhorn. How many know we, we want to we give our disciples right, weapons? I gave them my bullhorn. We had batteries in it. I said, this is what you do. You start preaching like this in the bullhorn. I says, I says what are you going to give? Are you gonna, what are you doing? He says, no. I, says, I said, here's some flyers. Give some flyers out, right? And he goes, oh, he goes, I could pass. He's, he's brand new, just saved. He's excited about being saved. So I gave him some flyers, right? He was there. I gave him some flyers. I says, okay, now when you preach, you give him a flyer and you tell him to come to Victory Outreach. Hallelujah. And you say, and you lead him to Christ. Not only that, watch this. 
I says, hang on for a second. I went in my room. I went in my drawer. I says, and now you got a, you, now you got a, a uniform to wear. Here's a T-shirt, Victory Hours T-shirt. Hallelujah. I said, put this on. Come on, give the Lord a hand. Amen. Put this on. And you preach and watch souls get saved. And actually, today he texted me. He says, souls got saved. Hallelujah. People were touched. Amen. And he, 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 he sent me a little video of him. He had the born and he was preaching. Amen. And that's what it's about. It's about getting radical. How, who's radical in the house of God? Are you, rad, are you still radical? Are you victory outreach tonight? You got to stay radical. And tonight, I want to talk about fighting disciples. See, a disciple knows how to fight. Can you get an amen? See, when, when you look around, we see a lot of radical people. What we do is radical. Can I get an amen? Right? We preach where nobody else wants to preach. We go where nobody else wants to go. Why? Right? We're radical. Say that word radical. But do you know how to fight radical? You used to fight radical in the world. Hallelujah. Women of God. Come on, somebody. Right? Tie up your hair. Come on, tie it up. Man, you, somebody says something, all oh, these nails come out. Hallelujah. How much more for God? Are you still radical? Ask your neighbor, are you still radical? Oh, man, you don't even want to ask your neighbor. Come on. Say, ask him. Say, are you still radical? Do you know how to fight? Don't make me come down there. Hallelujah. Do you still know how to fight? See, a lot of times we get sidetracked. You know what happens? We become civilized. I think Victory Army City Church, some of us might have become civilized already. All of a sudden, you got, you got a good job now. You make good money now, right? You're a professional. You're the manager. Hallelujah. Oh, I'm the manager. I got it. They gave me a name tag. I'm the manager. Right? And sometimes we can get a little civilized, right? And we lose the fight. We lose the passion. I'm preaching about passion and you, your eyes are closed because you're so tired because you gave everything to that job. Right? And I, I'm, I'm, I'm preaching my heart out. I'm trying to keep you awake. I shouldn't have to try to keep you awake because you need passion in your life. You need the power of God in your life. And you need to remember where you used to be sometimes to know where you want to go. Can you get an amen? amen. We got to remind ourselves. We got to get radical again. You know what? I, was, I, was, I, was, I happened to just go on YouTube and I seen the movie. I didn't see the whole movie. I seen one part of the movie. It's, it's, it's called Rocky Three. Anybody see Rocky Three in here? Right, you guys remember? I just want to see how old you guys are. Anybody know right, seen Rocky Three? Okay, good. You know, and, and you know, that's what happened to Rocky. Rocky got civilized. And not only that, that song, The Eye of the Tiger, you know what it says? He traded his passion for glory. He traded his passion for glory. And you know what happened when he did that in the movie? Who can tell me? He got whipped. <laughs> That's right. He got beat up. Remember, the, remember that? Mr. T whipped him, beat him up, right? Left him, left him all bloodied and beat up, right? And then the whole rest of the story is he's trying to get his passion back. He's trying to become the fighter that he used to be. He's trying to get that fire, get that passion get that zeal he was trying to get the eye of the tiger back that he lost in the ring some of us need to get that eye of the tiger back can you still fight i'm going to give you two things a disciple a fighting disciple knows how to pray and knows how to evangelize write that down he knows how to pray they know how to pray and then know how to evangelize. If you're not praying and if you're not evangelizing, then just maybe you're not a disciple. I'm just throwing that out there for free. Hallelujah. 
Say that. Pray and disciple. I mean, and evangelize. That's a disciple. Right? See, you got to get that passion back. You got to get that fighting spirit back. Right? You see, when you're hungry, somebody, how many are hungry spiritually? See, when you're hungry for the things of God, right, you're like that hungry tiger. You're like that, 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 that person that says, you know what, I need to go after my prey. I need to go after what I long for. I need to get my passion back. I need to get my zeal back. I need to pray and I need to evangelize. I need to go to the streets and I need to pray. Can I get an amen? How hungry are you tonight? Are you still hungry for the things of God? Do you still have a mission for your community? Do you still have a mission and a, and a vision for your family? Right? Are you, are you on fire again? See, sometimes we want to change everyone else, and God is saying, just you change first. See, fighting disciples know how to pray. And they know how to evangelize. Matthew chapter 9, verse 35. I'm going to read it for you. It says this. Then Jesus went about all the cities and villages, teaching in the synagogues, preaching the gospel of the kingdom. Say he was preaching. He was healing every sickness and every disease among the people. But when he saw the multitudes, say multitudes, he was moved with compassion for them. Because they were weary and scattered like sheep, having no shepherd. Then he said to his disciples, to his disciples, the harvest is truly plentiful, but the laborers are few. Therefore, pray the Lord of the harvest to send out laborers into the harvest field. He said, pray. Somebody say, pray. He said, pray, Lord of the harvest. Pray to the Lord of the harvest. If you want to write something down, write this down. Prayerlessness is the breeding ground of frustration. Prayerlessness is the breeding ground of frustration. Why am I so frustrated sometimes? Why am I so sometimes in the flesh a lot? How come I feel that, man, I, every time, I, I, it's like I'm fighting something all the time. I, 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 don't, I, I don't even want to be in church sometimes. I don't want to go to Bible study. I don't want to go to the streets. I don't want to do the spiritual things in my life. Let me ask you, are you praying? See, if you're not praying, you're going you're gonna to remain frustrated all the time. You're fighting a battle with no spiritual strength when you don't pray. See, a disciple knows how to pray. Say that prayer is your power. Prayer is your power. Some people say, well, so it feels like my prayers are not working. Anybody ever felt like that? No, I'm going to come down because I, I feel like I'm preaching to myself tonight. Have you ever felt like your prayers are not working? I pray every day. I, I pray in the morning. I pray at night. I pray at church. I, I pray when, you know, at Bible study. I pray. I ask the pastor to pray for me. I ask the leaders to pray for me. And it seems like everything's staying the same. As a matter of fact, it's getting worse. Ever since I've been praying, it's getting worse. Maybe my prayers are not working. Anybody ever felt like that before? Come on. Tell the truth. Shame the devil tonight. We can feel like that, right? See, but you know what that's like? That's like walking into this room and all the lights are off and we hit the switch and it doesn't, and nothing turns on. We turn on the light switch and, and it's like, okay, what's wrong here? Does that mean that we stop Believing in electricity? Does that mean we stop paying the electric bill? It means something's wrong. Can I get an amen? It means how about just, how about if it means that maybe there's a fuse that's out of place. Maybe a bulb needs to be changed. Maybe there's a, a connection that's not right. Maybe we should call Brother Manny and maybe he can go up there and look at it. Come on, somebody. Because it's, they look at, the electricity is not the problem. Maybe it's something else. And the same thing with prayer. 
Just because you don't see results right now doesn't mean prayer doesn't work. Maybe God wants to do something in your life. Maybe he's teaching you endurance. Maybe he's teaching you commitment. Maybe he's teaching you loyal. Can you be loyal when you still don't see it happening? Can you still love me even though right now you might not see all the miracles right now? Can you still serve me? Can you still pray? Can you still pray when you don't feel like it? Can you get an amen? Can you still fight? disciple or you just throw your gloves in the ring and you give up you take your ball and go home come on somebody give me my ball how many know we're not here we're not we're not about giving up can I get an amen we're not about just throwing in the towel that's what I love about Rocky. He didn't give up. You know what he did? He went, he went, he went, he found, if you've seen the movie, he found Apollo Creed, right? Remember, he found Apollo Creed. He went to Apollo Creed, and Apollo Creed said, he was hitting the bag. Apollo Creed said, that's not how you do it. Remember, he was hitting the bag. He says, when you fought me, you were hungry. He said, when you fought me, you had the eye of the tiger. He says, you lost it. He goes, I'm going to help you get it back. You remember what he did? He took him. You know, sometimes we got to start We got to start with the basics. He took him to the gym, right? He took him to the gym. He went to the gym. Some of you are going to go watch it tonight. Go ahead, watch it tonight. Amen. He took him to the gym, and he, it, was, it was in L.A. He took him to, it was dusty, it was dirty, had them boxes. They were all sweating, and they're hitting the bag, right? They're, 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 all, they're in the gym, right? And, they're, they're, and, and he was walking with, with Rocky. He said, look at their eyes, Rocky. Look at their eyes. He said, see their eyes? You had those eyes. That's where you were. See, look at their eyes. Look at how hungry they are. Look at how thirsty they are. Look at how much they want to win. They want to fight. They just need an opportunity. He says, you got to get it back. You got to get the eye of the tiger back in your life. And what did he do? Right? He started from the basics. And I'm telling you, Victor Ari City Church, if you want to see God move in your marriage, move in your home, move with your children, move in your ministry, move at your job, then maybe you should get back on your knees and start praying for something to happen start believing God for the great miracles in your life oh pastor I pray already well maybe there's a connection that's messed up because God's not the problem can you get an amen maybe we need to get back to where God wants us to be can you get an amen Psalms chapter 133 verse 1 says this. It says, Behold, how good and how pleasant it is for the brethren to dwell together in unity. Say unity. It's like the precious oil upon the head, upon the head, running down the beard, the beard of Aaron running down on the edge of his garments. It's like the dew of Hermon descending upon the mountains of Zion. For there the Lord commanded his blessings, life evermore. First thing we got to remember, if you want to fight, you need the anointing. Write that down, the anointing. God's anointing will give you what you need to fight. See, the, the oil that ran down Aaron represents the anointing of God. It represents the power of God. How do we get the anointing? By praying. If you don't pray, you don't what? Come on, if you don't fast, you know, that's a real saying. We just don't say that to say that, right? Prayer brings the anointing. See, there's no need to move on and talk about all these other things if we're not praying. Can I get an amen? See, the first lesson of a disciple is you need to learn how to pray. The first lesson in class, right, lesson number one, disciple. How do I be a disciple? Learn how to pray. If you're not praying, you're not a good disciple. If you're not praying, you're not listening to what needs to be taught to you. You're not being obedient because I'm sure your leader has taught you how to pray. I'm sure this is not the first class that you've been in. As I look around, you've been here for a while. Somebody has said you need to pray. Have you been obedient? See, the strategy 
the strategy of every disciple, the first lesson is to have a radical prayer life. Jesus said, pray to the Lord of harvest to send forth workers into the harvest field. That was, that's what he said. He looked at his disciples and said, learn to pray. If you want to see great things happen in the city, pray. If you want to see your, your things happen in your family, pray. If you want to see things, miracles in your life, learn how to pray. How come I'm not seeing miracles? Maybe we're just not praying. See, pray for men of God and women of God that we have to teach people how to fight, how to pray, and how to evangelize. My first assignment, okay, I've been there. I know. I, I walked in. I, you know, sometimes we get frustrated. Can you get an amen? See, we're, we're doing a lot of things, but are you doing the right things? We're doing a lot of things. We, we work real hard in the ministry, right? We, we, we have jobs. We're at our jobs. We're doing a lot of things. We're tired. Nobody tired in here? We're doing a lot of things. And I remember going to our pastor as a young disciple. And I said, Pastor, I, I go, I said, man, I, I, I'm praying. I'm trying to be a, a good husband. I'm trying to be a good father. That ain't going right. Come on, somebody. I'm trying, to, I'm trying to function in the ministry. Man, that ain't going right. Come on, somebody. Right? I'm trying to just do all the right things. Even at my job, I finally got a job. And they don't like me at my job. I'm trying to, I'm, I'm doing everything that I'm supposed to be doing. You know, my first assignment, Pastor Rick says, are you praying? You know what he told me? I'm, I'm going to tell you what exactly what he said. He says, this is what I want you to do, Manny. He says, I want you to go, I want you to, I want you on Saturday, you meet me uh, at the street uh, uh, for prayer on Saturday. He said, the team's going to be here. We're all going to be there at the church. And you come, and I want you to come, and I want you to pray. And then, and then you know what he said? He says, and then from that day forward, never leave the streets. He said, I want you to be in the streets all the time. And you go out and evangelize all the time. And that's, that's your mission. And I'm thinking, yeah, but what about my wife? She beat me up yesterday. No, I said <laughs> I got, I got some stories, amen? And she'll, she'll tell you, and I, and I, and I said, I said, Pastor gave me a, uh, Pastor gave me a, uh, uh, he gave me an assignment. And she goes, well, what did he tell you to do? Uh, pay some bills? I said, no. <laughs> and he told me to go to the streets. He wants me to pray with the guys early and, and, and get ready to hit the streets. She said, yeah, but what about the bills? What about the kids? What about me? Hello, somebody. I said, I don't know. I'm on assignment. <laughs> right? That's exactly what I said. And I went. But let me tell you something. I went, to, I, I went to the streets. I got there early, and Pastor Rick was there. You know, Pastor Rick, he's praying. And I was watching. I go, okay, I guess, I guess this is what we're supposed to do. And I, and I said, you know, the, home, the men's home was there, women's home was there. They had the, the evangelism leaders were there. And I got there, and I started praying. I said, amen, and I started praying. And I didn't know how to pray. I just I remember going to life group. Uh, we had Bible study, and they would pray, and I would hear them pray. But I really wasn't praying. But it was when I got there. And you know what they were praying? They were praying for the city. They were praying for souls. They were praying for drug addicts, for gang members, for prostitutes. They were praying for the lost. They were praying for me. When I was praying, I was reminding myself of myself. When I was praying, I started thinking about a young gangbanger that was lost in the neighborhood, a drug addict that was lost in the neighborhood. And I started praying even more. And I started praying harder, right? And then we went out into the streets to go evangelize. And then we went out, and, we, and you, know what, you know what happened? Everything we prayed for, we seen God move in miracles. Come on, that's a good place to clap. Hallelujah. So I learned how to pray, then I learned how to go evangelize. You know what I was being taught? I was learning how to fight. I was learning, I was being discipled by my pastor how to fight. How to fight in the spiritual realm. 
how to fight on the streets, right? He didn't, I didn't have no gun, right? I didn't, have, I didn't have boxing gloves. He said, you pray and you evangelize. You pray and you evangelize. You want to be a good disciple? You need to be praying and you need to be evangelizing, right? Pray at the church. Pray at home. Then go get some flyers and go to the streets. And you watch God move in your life. Yeah, but my, my, my boss is going to fire me. Well, pray for him while you go out. I'm, I'm giving you some spiritual stuff right now, guys. Listen to me. You learn number, rule number one, lesson number one. You learn how to pray and you learn how to evangelize. You got to do these things to be a good disciple. Look, at to, to, a, a fighting disciple is a person that prays and evangelizes. All the time. Say all the time. All the time. It needs to become a part of your life. Right? Then I would go home. And it would be a different story. Hallelujah. You know how many know that? How many know what I'm talking about? See, because I needed to, I, I wasn't a man yet. I thought I was a man. I was, I, was, I was in the age I was a man. I, was, I, I wasn't a father yet. I, I had kids, but I wasn't a father yet. Right? I wasn't even a good employee yet until I learned how to fight. To I learn how to become a man by learning how to pray and how to evangelize. Then I was able to see God move in my life. See, when you're obedient to God and you're faithful to God, God will move on your behalf. God will start doing things in the spiritual realm. All of a sudden, I started to love my wife even more. All of a sudden, I come back from the evangelism with some flowers. Come on, somebody, with some candy. Hallelujah. I say, hey, you want to go to McDonald's? Hallelujah. Don't, give, don't look at me like that. You ain't never took the, the, you know, the, the woman of God to McDonald's? Put the kids on the slide. Hallelujah. I never did that before. I never did that. I didn't know how to do that. I just said, man, I get, you know, I, she just was there. I didn't know how to treat her. I didn't know how to love her. I didn't know how to do nothing. Right? But it was when I was under the anointing of God, like the, the oil that ran from the head of Aaron down his beard. came. Then that's where God commanded his blessing. As I went home, God says, you need to be a good father now. You need to take care of your babies now. Let me teach you. I teach you how to fight on the streets, fight on prayer. Now let me teach you how to fight at home, fight for your children, fight for your kids and then somebody say and then then you go to your job because you prayed in the morning anybody pray in the morning and you go to your job and they say oh that that mean person that don't like you come on somebody all of a sudden they start liking you all of a sudden something starts happening they're not talking down upon you they're looking at you with respect because there's an anointing upon your life. Number one, do you have God's anointing upon your life? That's what we need to do. See, prayer is our foundation. Through prayer, we gain the heart of God. We get compassion back. We get our zeal back. We get our love for people back. Love for our community. Love for our family. Right? Love for our kids, our wife. That's where God reminds us why he saved us. Is through prayer. Number two is you get God's vision and strategy for your life. How many of you want God's vision and strategy for your life? What, do you think we're just doing this just to do this? Is this? Are we just waking up every day just functioning and kind of going through the motions? That's not how God works. God will anoint you, number one, and then also he'll give you a vision and he'll give you a strategy. This is what I want you to do. This is exactly uh, A, B, C, D. This is what I want you to do in your life. How many of you want the vision and strategy of God in your life? That's what happened. Do you have one? Does God give you a scripture? Does God, has God given you promises? If he hasn't, ask him for a promise. Ask him for some scriptures. Ask him for those. Say, show me in the word of God, Lord. Show me what you want to do. See, that's what happens. What you're doing, you're removing the veil. Right? The, the false attitude that sometimes we can get. You know, we could just go through the motions of church. 
Some of you came tonight, you're just going through the motions. You say, oh, I'll just show up, say hi, here I am, okay, it's good. No, no, God wants more from you. He wants, to, he wants you to remove that veil. Come on, somebody. To be realistic in your relationship with him. That's what happens when you get the vision and you get the strategy of God. See, and, and as, as many hours as you're putting in at your job, as many hours as you're putting in with your family, as many hours as you're putting in with that ministry, that's as many hours you need to be putting in with prayer. Are they lining up together? You say, God, I want you to move in this area, but do, are we praying for that area? Or we just expect it to happen? Can you get an amen? See, God knows how much effort we're really putting in spiritually. How much time during the week are we really putting in in prayer? How many man hours are you putting in at work? Are you putting in with God? Can you get an amen? amen? See, sometimes we can make what's, see, we can make what's so spiritual, we can turn it into just a physical thing. And we just work and work hard, we work hard, and we're not seeing the results we want. We make it a little bit more difficult than it is. And God is saying, why don't you pray more? It's like, it's like, like you're, 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 you're working harder and you're seeing less results. See, but if you pray hard, come on, somebody say pray hard. If you pray hard, you'll see more results. Are we putting in the manpower when it comes to prayer? See, our prayer time needs to re re resemble our physical effort that we're putting in. Can you get an amen? Let me give you one more and I'm done, okay? Number three, God's deliverance. How many of you want to see God's deliverance? Isaiah 58 verse 6 said, it is, not, is this not the fast that I have chosen? To loose the bonds of wickedness, to undo the heavy burdens, to let the oppressed free, and that you break every yoke. Say, break every yoke. Are people being delivered? Do people get delivered anymore? Set free. Do you remember when God delivered you? Who remembers when God delivered you? Wasn't that, a, wasn't that the greatest day of your life? That was the greatest day of my life. God set me free. The chains fell off. Evil spirits were cast out. Chains were broken. See, you know why people are not being delivered the way that we know they can? Because God's people are not praying the way that we know they should. That brings deliverance. Somebody say deliverance. Just like when we go to the streets, you know why we pray so much? Because that's where the battle is won. It's not when you're out there. It's when you're praying. See, prayer, the battle is won on your knees. Can I get an amen? How many want to see victory in your life? Huh? Victory will only come to those that their knees are chaffed. Ask your neighbor, what your knees look like? See, prayer, when you're on your knees and you're praying, you'll start seeing the miracles of God in your life. Can you get an amen? That's what happens. See, we can make something that spiritual is so difficult because we attack it from the physical and not the spiritual. Too many people, too many Christians are physically burned out because they lost the spiritual discernment when it comes to prayer. Why am I so burned out? Why do I feel like I'm just going through circles, right? It's because, you know what, we're looking at it from the physical. It's like Mary and Martha, right? You know the story. Mary was at the feet of Jesus, and Martha was cleaning the house. Hallelujah. Martha got mad. She said, I'm doing all the work. Jesus, I'm doing everything around here. And all she's been doing is at your feet, wiping her, her, her hair, wiping your feet with her hair. 
And Jesus, what did Jesus tell her? He says, what she's doing is good. Paraphrasing it. Because you got it all mixed up. Hallelujah, basically. You know, sometimes we could get it mixed up. And God is saying, yeah, uh, yeah, but I want to preach. I want to do great things. I want to do everything. God is saying, just pray. Just learn how to fight in the spiritual. Pray and evangelize. Pray and evangelize. Pray and evangelize. Say that. Pray and evangelize. Pray and go out. Pray and reach people. Bring people to church. Pray and bring them in. Pray and bring them in. That's how you fight. Can I get an amen? I want Adam to come up. Come on, worship. Come on up. You know, it's easy to stop fighting. The easiest thing that we could do is stop fighting. Can you get an amen? Some of you tonight, you came in and the devil has been telling you, just stop fighting. You ain't winning. As a matter of fact, you're losing. How many of the devil's a liar? I said the devil's a liar. Come on, cl clap your hand if you believe the devil's a liar. We're not called to give up. We're called to fight. We're called to move forward. We're called to do great exploits for God. We're called to reach the lost. We're called to pray. We're called to evangelize. We're called to fight. Where are the fighting disciples at tonight? Are you a fighting disciple? Do you still have the urgency to get in the ring? Do you still have the passion like you once had before? Do you still have that eye? Huh? You know, you just look in somebody's eyes and you can tell. You look in their eyes and you can see they don't want to fight anymore. I seen a, there was a fight, what was it, last Saturday? Uh, Garcia against another guy. I was able to see the end of the fight. And Garcia was getting beat up. He was getting whipped. How many of you seen the fight? Some of you seen the fight. He was getting whipped. The guy was just way out of his league. And the, 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 he comes to the, the, the ring, the, the round's over, and he comes, he's all beat up. He comes to the end of the ring. And his coach looks at him, his brother, his coach, he says, listen, he says, if I don't see you fighting, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to quit. I'm going to throw in the towel. And he looked up. He said, don't throw in the towel. And he went back in there. Come on, somebody. He didn't win, but he didn't get knocked out. Come on, somebody. He finished the fight. As a matter of fact, he was already a champion. But he didn't give up the fight. Some of you tonight, the Lord is saying, don't give up the fight. I've anointed you for this. I called you for this. I've empowered you for this. I put a special grace upon your life. You can't give up this fight. Your kids are counting on you. Your mother, your father, your loved ones. They're counting on you. You can't give up the fight. Get up and get in that ring and get that passion back. And don't give up the fight. Proverbs chapter 21. This scripture changed my life. Write it down. Proverbs chapter 21 verse 13. Many disciples stop fighting because of the lack of love in their life. Proverbs 21 verse 13 says, those who shut their ears to the cry of the poor will be ignored in their own time of need. That's real. Listen, I'm going to read it one more time because this, this bring revela brought revelation to me. Do we have it up there? Listen. Those who shut their ears to the cry of the poor will be ignored in their own time of need. I'm telling you guys, when I read that, when I read that scripture, I was praying, 
I said, Lord, have I lost the ear to hear the cry? Have I forgot what, what it was like to be on the other side asking for help? You know, when you do that, you know, God will put you in a position. He'll always bring somebody your way. And sometimes we see these people that, you know, they're begging for, for money. And you know what I'm talking about. They're all over the place. And I remember you, you see them so much, you become callous. You become callous, right? You see them all the time. They're begging. And, and you know the first thing we say, oh, they're going to go get high. Well, you used to go get high. Right? All of a sudden, we... We get civilized. All of a sudden, we forgot when we were dirty, when we were hurting, when we were crying out, God, send somebody to help me. And by his grace and by his love, he always was faithful and he sent somebody your way. And all of a sudden, we, don't, we, we, we put our nose up and we walk away. And God was dealing with me. You know, I pull up, and right away, God's dealing with me. I pull up, and I get out of my downtown. I get out of my car. And I look up, and there he was right there with the cup in his hand. Let me know what I'm talking about. Can you help me, sir? Hey, sir, can you help me? Please, anything. And, and, and that, that scripture those who shut their ears to the cry of the poor will be ignored in their own time of need. I took off my jacket. I threw it in my car. Ah! Slammed my door. He says, I'm not going to go do what I was supposed to do. I said, come here, bro. And I, started, and I started ministering to him. And I looked him in the eyes. And he lost his will to fight. I said, I said, listen, man, I'm going to give you some money. But before I give you the money, I need to tell you about Jesus. You're going to give me some money? Yeah, don't worry. I'm going to give you some money. You know, you, you got to keep them there. Hallelujah. And I says, I used to be you. When I was 13, I was on the streets. I was begging just like him. I was on a wall. I, I, like it was yesterday. I was with the winos. I was, I was, I was cleaning windows. Some of you don't know because I got my glasses. I got a suit on. Oh, you know, I was cleaning windows. I was cleaning, I was cleaning windows. I was cleaning windows. I was good at it. I'm still good at it. Hallelujah. And I says, I was, I, I was you. He goes, no, you weren't. Yes, sir. And I started sharing my testimony with him. You know what started happening? I said, so, so what drug are you doing? He goes, oh, I just drink. And then I started sharing my testimony with him. And then I, I had him by the hand. Let me see. I, I had him like this, and I wouldn't let him go. How many know that? You don't let him go. Hallelujah. Hold on to that. He, he was pulling away. I held on to that. Hand. I wanted, no, you're not going to get away from me. And I held on to his hand, and I started telling him about the love of God. I told him that. I said, you don't even know who you stopped right now. I said, I was all messed up, man. I was lost. I was in prison, man. I said, but God did a miracle in my life. He loves you, man. I said, you want to change? He said, yes, I want to change. I says, okay, listen. I'm going to get on the phone right now, and somebody's going to come pick you up right now. He goes, you know, I'm really doing heroin. I says, okay, I'm glad you told me that. He goes, and I'm not ready, man. Because he knew, he looked in my eyes, and he knew that I was passionate about reaching him. That I didn't want to be that man. I want to be open and remember. And let me tell you something. He didn't go that night. But I prayed for him. Rededicated his life to Jesus. Come on, somebody, make sure he's saved. If he were to die that night, he's going to heaven. Come on, give the Lord a good hand. Hallelujah. Come on, give the Lord a good hand. And I gave him some money. Hallelujah. And she said, well, why did you give him the money? Because right now, see, this is, this, is the, this is the new thing now. I'm going to kill that. 
Well, he went to go buy drugs or, or alcohol. How do you know? How do you know? How do you know he didn't go buy a hamburger? Who are we to judge people? Victory Outreach, who are we to judge people? Why did I give him money? Not for him, for me. I gave it to him for me. Because I need to love people. And I don't want to be that man. I want to be able to, 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 to love the unlovable, to reach the unreachable. When people see me, they see Jesus of my life. And that's you, Victory Outreach. That's you, disciple. Don't forget. Don't lose your passion. Don't trade your passion for glory. Come on, everybody, let's stand.